It was an ordinary, clear, and weather-beaten summer day. It seemed like one of a thousand such days, but still a strange uneasiness invisibly hovered in the air. On a busy main street of a big city, unsuspecting citizens getting on a bus. On the street, the traffic is quietly moving along, following its usual route. But on one of the buses, an alarm siren sounds. A red light comes on, alerting the riders to some unknown danger. The alarm sent a sticky sweat down the young man's back and face. No one understands what's going on, but the situation is clearly tense. The alarm is going off for a reason. What is happening is more like a movie set. It's easier to convince yourself of this than to believe that the doll across the street is real. Something green in color with absolutely ugly appearance. Looks more like a scarecrow stands in the middle of the car with an ax in his hand. The monster has a beastly grin and completely empty bright yellow eyes. More like round light bulbs. It stood still for a minute, then snapped and started indiscriminately attacking people. A crowd of unknown monsters appearing out of nowhere, smashing everything around, moving very fast, completely disregarding the laws of gravity. If hell existed, it would probably look like this. People don't even have time to speak. The monsters mercilessly slaughter everyone in their path. With trembling hands fumbling for a cell phone in their pocket, someone tries to dial emergency services but fails because an unknown bright ray blows the heads off the seated passengers. Confusion and turmoil, screams and panic have gripped the people of this day that never seem to be the end of them, while the monsters bloodily slaughter their prey in groups. The worst thing is that no one can answer them. People are so shocked that they don't even try to confront the unknown killers. The guy obviously realizes what's going on, nervously holding the handle of his backpack. He urgently needs to calm down. The people are sliced and tortured, lying on the floor. Their wounds are not compatible with life, and very soon they will run out. The beasts have no mercy. They kill everyone indiscriminately. They don't care at all about their sex in return. People are struck by an unusually brutal and violent something and start to go mad. The things they see just don't fit into their heads. On this day, 80% of the population will be wiped out by an invasion of unknown monsters. Some of the monsters, though scary, look remotely like human figures. Some of them look like werewolves. They have the same beastly grin with strong paws and blade-sharp claws. The beasts slowly but surely approach the last person on the bus, clearing their way, leaving a mountain of corpses behind them. The boy clenches his teeth tightly. He won't give up and will fight the wickedness to the last drop of his strength. Even though he has no value as a player and is a complete mediocrity, he readily puts his sword out as the monsters approach him. But all this has yet to happen, and now it's 2028 in Sunny Soul. In the classroom, students are sitting around the blackboard, taking dictation from the teacher. A short time later, in the courtyard at a street food stall, the boys gather to order their food. The boys are at the table discussing the exam, which was doomed to fail because it was too difficult. Hesitantly pushing the food towards him, this is his third attempt to get in. Apparently, it's time to forget about getting a civil service job and look for a job. Kim Hyuk Jin is 30 years old and he's trying to pass the exam for the third time without success and he spent seven years of his life trying to pass the exam. Ten years ago, when a portal opened in Seoul, people died in a horrible event, and those who survived the invasion would later be called players. A guy is absent-mindedly picking at his food with a fork. He also dreamed of becoming a player, but gave up long ago because he doesn't have the necessary talent. Someone nearby is discussing the video of Kwak Dae Woon, who is so good at fighting that he has earned his nickname God Dae Woon for a reason. One of the people discussing turns his head, he would probably be like that too if he had talent, but he's just an ordinary person and his destiny is to pass the exam. Turning to Kim Hyuk Jin, who also passed the player aptitude test with 67 talent panels, setting a record in Korea. The guy's not stopping. Kim Hyuk Jin, who's quietly eating, is nicknamed Dead Genius. Looking at the Dead Genius, the other person is questioning his talent. Why is he sitting here? Kim Hyun Jin listens to the audience with a reproachful expression. The trouble is that the talent panel will be discovered too late. He recalls the results of his second test. Seven years ago, as a last chance, he took the talent test again. Looking at the terms of the test in his hands, sitting in front of the instructor, the government decided to test people for talent or lack thereof. Kim Hyun Jin only had one talent while taking the test, which was worse than no talent at all. Then he didn't realize it and thought it was the worst result, so he was very upset. And why did the head of the Players Association's personnel department Ask about his preparation for the civil servant exams. And why did he personally come to give him the results, wishing him good luck in the upcoming exam? The guy had only finished high school and wasn't good at anything in particular. But his hopes of becoming a civil servant player weren't successful either. The life of successful players was going well. 
They were interested in them, followed their every move, turning them into stars. One day trying to register again, he was met by a skeptical girl, only one panel open. It's not too good for the player. So he stopped trying and buried the dream of becoming a player deep inside. It's not a luxury he can afford. He enters the entrance of his house, climbing the stairs. He has long ago stopped looking forward to a new day, listening to his wife meet her drunken husband. All he has to look forward to is the unwashed morning dishes and the loneliness of an empty apartment and the portrait of his mother and sister looking lovingly and smiling from the frame. Habitually sits down at his desk, thinking about the cataclysm that began 2018 in Seoul and Chono. Turning on a video lesson about the cataclysm, it all started with primordial fog in Seoul. The result would be 145,000 dead and 150,000 affected. Looking carefully at the screen, during this fog, it was hard to stand on one's feet. In fact, the entire Jonogu area was close to total destruction. He is looking at the screen of his phone. It was 10 years ago that Ma Sung-hyun played a huge role in the beginning of the cataclysm, and now he is a world-famous player. Sitting in the recording studio, Ma Sung-hyun assures from his experience that the efforts made then and now are more important than any talent. Kim Hyun-jin looks at the broadcaster carefully. Wasn't his effort enough? He interrupts his inner skeptic by covering his ears with his palms. No, he forbids himself to think about the past. He grabs a pen in his hands trying to, but annoying thoughts don't let him concentrate. He often thinks about the same thing from different angles in his mind. Taking out a letter from a long closed envelope, one thought does not give him peace, namely, that he is to blame for everything. He often rereads the letter his mother wrote to him before she died. An old photo comes to mind, his mom died of an illness. His sister wanted to get out of poverty. She got a job as a semiconductor technician, but she only got leukemia and is now in the hospital. He has to work hard for his family. He has no money, no talent, no connections. Meanwhile, it's getting dark outside. What bad luck they must have discovered his talent, but when it was too late. Lying exhausted in bed, he has to try harder, even though it's going very badly. He clenches his fists harder, but will his tomorrow change if he tries harder? And what will he do if he doesn't? He's feeling very lonely, broken, and depressed. The electronic clock is counting down minute by minute following its settings. It's one minute to midnight, just a little bit more, and a new day will begin. Maybe then something will change for our hero. The bright flashes in the middle of the night clearly indicate that something is about to happen, if it hasn't already. The night has finally turned today, bringing with it possible changes. The alarm clock didn't go off to wake the owner to wake up and face the new day. He fidgets restlessly on his pillow, shielding himself from the sunlight that entered the room. Kim Hyunjin sits up sharply, taking his head. Did he oversleep even though he went to bed relatively early? He has to shower and go to the academy before the midterm evaluation. The bus stop is crowded. The guy talking on the phone with his mom says he'll have breakfast on the way to school. The schedule board says that the buses that are delayed will be arriving soon. Kim Hyunjin looks up and sees that the bus he needs will arrive in two minutes. A sixth sense tells him there's something wrong with this day, but he doesn't know why. The bus arrives at the bus stop, picking up passengers, and some stay behind to wait for their destinations. Kim Hyunjin looks around once more, the strange feeling still lingering in his mind. The right bus has arrived, but the guy is still in his thoughts. What makes this day different from the others? Maybe the problem is his mood, okay? He brushes off the unnecessary feelings, pays the fare, enters the bus. As he walks to a free seat, he hears people talking to each other, some making phone calls, some discussing a new song by Pink Velvet. Kim Hyunjin takes off his backpack as he takes a seat on the bus. It's strange. This band is very old. Is it really popular again? He takes out his notebook, looking over his notes to better prepare himself for the upcoming meeting. The bus picks up the pace, traveling down Seoul's streets to the next stop. The fog begins to gradually roll in, blocking out the sunlight of the beautiful morning. While Kim Hyun Jin concentrates on the recordings of the cataclysmic event that happened 10 years ago, the cabin notes that it's quite cool for April. Sitting still with his hand on his chin, Kim Hyun Jin repeats to himself what he wrote earlier. But he's distracted by a passenger's voice who anxiously points to something, attracting everyone's attention. Looking around, he is as puzzled as the other passengers, where did this strange fog come from? It's getting darker and darker outside the bus window. Strangely, the forecast didn't mention it. The whole road and the city itself becomes dark, becoming a blurred image. Kim Hyun Jin, covering his nose with his hand, a horrible stench like a sewer comes into the bus. The uneasy feeling that has been plaguing him all morning comes back, and he turns fearfully in the direction of the sudden noise. He's startled by his own cell phone, which has an emergency text message. Kim Hyun Jin reads the message. He's completely confused by what's happening. His face contorts into a grimace of anger, and he clenches his jaw tightly as he reads the message again. 
He suddenly feels stuffy. He grabs the collar of his shirt and unbuttons the top buttons. This can't be happening. According to the date on his phone, he's in the events of 10 years ago. He starts to wind down the whole day, realizing what's been tormenting him so much. As soon as he gets to the bus stop, the events repeat themselves. It's the same date of the soul cataclysm. The realization hits him like an electric shock. Finally, the entire Jono district, including Guangwaman, is covered in a dense layer of black fog. Angry passengers start to complain, not only is it dark, but there's a strange stench. Kim Hyun Jin opens the right page of his notes. Everything fits, the date, the beginning of the fog, the sewer stench, the emergency message. And he takes a bus to Giono, where the evil monsters are already rampaging around breaking and smashing things and killing locals. While Kim Hyun Jin realizes what is happening and prepares for his imminent death, the passengers decide whether to go on or not, due to the cataclysm. Kim Hyun Jin doesn't need a decision. Not only has he gone back in time, he knows exactly what's going to happen today. A window of information appears in front of Kim Hyun Jin, which surprises and dumbfounds him. The first training began in Seoul 10 years ago when a black hole opened up in the middle of the city to the unsuspecting residents who were at the epicenter of the event. Countless monsters poured out of the dungeon, crushing everyone with no chance of resistance. The cataclysm that lasted a week and claimed nearly 150,000 innocent lives, later to be called The Learning, or Open Beta. It was one of the worst days in human history, with only a 3% chance of survival. It brought great destruction to the city like a natural disaster. But later on, people called players appeared and quickly suppressed the monsters, gradually dealing with the catastrophe. Location-specific guides and recordings of player battles began to appear. The world began to recover from the cataclysm, giving the opportunity to create virtual dungeons for strategizing. Kim Hyun Jin memorized all the raids and went through the dungeons hundreds of times. Even though he didn't become a player, he still memorized the raid tactics and now knows no one who can match him in this knowledge. Before he started his training, he knew only in theory that the system alert appeared. Now he could see it for himself. Apparently, it's really a thing of the past. But before he could even process the thought, he was thrown backwards. All the passengers, who were already visibly nervous, started to get even more outraged. It looked like they'd hit something. Panic is at its peak. The people in the cabin are tense. Not only can't they see anything, but they're very late. With all his will in his fist, Kim Hyun Jin orders himself to calm down. No one else seems to have gotten the notification, so he's the only player. So he'll have to use all the experience and knowledge he's gained. The alerts come to Kim Hyun Jin one by one, and it's getting on Kim Hyun Jin's nerves. And it turns out that someone is interested in him, so they're giving him bonuses. It turns out that the unknown observers are guards, and it's their bonuses and privileges that determine the player's outcome. These creatures are in a dimension that is one level above the player. The bonus that Kim Hyun Jun got from the Guardian is the eyes of a cold-blooded observer. The bonus started its effect, instantly making the guy very calm as if he is not in the epicenter of the event but just observing it. The system starts countdown to the beginning of the quest. The driver apologized to the passengers. Further, he will not be able to drive too thick fog. It's the worst morning ever for the passengers. Kim Hyun Jin yells for everyone to stay in their seats and get down on the floor. That's the only way they can be saved. The system once again alerts them that an unknown observer is interested. The passengers notice a strange movement near the stopped bus. The system is still counting down. A bright blue glow appears next to the bus, like a portal to another dimension. Mid-level administrators appear from the portal. School-age boys stare at the portal in amazement. The half-appeared girl lowers her gaze at those present. This is middle-level administrator Sanya. She came out of the portal. She has huge white wings behind her, she greeted the audience. From the moment she appeared, everyone in this place will be in training. Kim Hyun Jin is amazed to read the rules on the screen. He's been stuck in this quest for seven days. No, there must be some mistake. He asked for an explanation. Maybe they're making a movie. The excited crowd turns to the angel, insisting on an explanation. And if this is someone's joke, it's not funny. But Selena's in no mood for explanations. She goes on about the rules of survival in this quest. People don't get an answer. It's not what they asked for. A man suddenly throws himself on the windshield and a fountain of blood spurts out of his mouth, scaring the passengers even more. That's the strategy of those monsters. They're trying to create more panic and fear. Somebody's yelling for the police to be called. The city's army is already in the middle of destroying the neighborhood, dragging the dead with them. The system announces that the first wave of goblins is coming to the city, and they start to invade the Giono area. Kim Hyun Jin is startled by the sudden appearance of a monster in the window on his side. The passengers hear that something has already climbed to the roof of the bus. They have to get out, but someone yells that they can't open the door. A goblin close to the bus swings his hammer, ready to strike.
panicking, screaming, hysterical, grabbing their heads. The situation is getting hotter by the second. Kim Hyun Jin is frantically thinking of a plan of action. There will be a massacre outside. We can take shelter here for now. But the most important thing is the experience gained from 10 years of fighting these creatures. You can't fight them directly. Goblins are several times stronger than the average human, so there is no chance of standing up to them on your own. But the cover is too unreliable. The goblin is already armed with a huge sledgehammer, aiming at the glass of the bus. And the weapon is already shattering the fragile glass, opening the way for the monsters. The door has been breached and people are scared to death trying to find a safe escape route. Kim Hyun Jin confidently points to the ground. All he has to do is lie down and stay put, but the people are too scared to hear him. But he tries to shout to them anyway. If they want to survive, they have to listen to him. But the passengers look at the guy like he's crazy. They won't listen to him. They have to think of a way to escape. Realizing that he won't talk sense into them, Kim Hyun Jin accepts defeat. He won't try to make himself listen anymore. The system notifies him that the unknown person is watching the guy's actions with interest, so he activates his status and inventory, which distracts Kim Hyun Jin. An icon appears in front of his eyes detailing his current performance in the quest right now. His stats are very high, which is surprising because he heard that the King of Fists himself had an average of 9. But no time to think about it, Kim Hyun Jin sees the monsters rushing in. Another one opens his way with a huge wooden club. With tears in her eyes, the child tries to run away from her pursuer screaming for help. But before he can even get to the middle, the goblin's dagger is already in his back. The other one is already swinging his sledgehammer over the head of the terrified man. One second in the scene of a fierce battle between the goblins and the men who could not resist them unfolds. Ignoring pleas and cries, the monsters continue their atrocities, smiling and giggling. One of the crowd of goblins looks around the bus looking for a new victim with his burning yellow eyes. Notices Kim Hyun Jin lying motionless on the floor, something about him attracts him. He pokes at him with his baton, trying to see if he's alive or dead. Kim Hyun Jin is lying motionless, pretending to have long since passed away. Because he has an observer bonus from the guards, the goblin mistakes Kim Hyun Jin for a corpse. As the bus enters the designated safe zone, it starts to glow green. Kim Hyun Jin freezes in order to fulfill the conditions of the safe zone, and to keep the bus safe, he has to stay where he is. Even though he's scared, the guy does a good job of keeping the bus safe. All he's doing is probably because of the bonus the Guardian gave him at the beginning of the quest. He doesn't know what the bonus is for, but it makes it a lot easier to hold on. The goblins stand in a circle. If the knowledge Kim Hyun Jin received during his training is true, the first attack will not take more than 10 minutes. For the first five minutes, they've been breaking into the bus, which means that Kim Hyun Jin won't have long to wait to survive. The restless goblin grabs its prey by the hair. Pulling him closer, the goblin stares at the man. Its mouth stinks as it licks Kim Hyun Jin, who tries his best to keep his composure, not to inadvertently show that he's alive. It's going to be a while before he has time to take a break and come to his senses. But his eyes suddenly open and he wants to give him a chance to survive and prove himself. Impossible, it's another guardian. What if it's the Lion King himself? A glass bottle with green liquid appears in Kim Hyun Jin's hands. It seems that Kim Hyun Jin has a friend who wants Kim Hyun Jin to open up and prove himself in this challenge. The jar sent by the Lion King is a power-boosting elixir that lasts for 10 minutes and increases the player's strength by 6. This is the second bonus that Kim Hyun Jin received in this quest, but it's not clear why he impressed the guards so much. This elixir allows you to increase the main character's strength, but there is a side effect. Kim Hyun Jin is looking towards the goblins. If he fights using the second bonus, he has a good chance of winning. The goblins are looking at all the people to see if there are any survivors. Their rage has subsided. The Lion King Guardian is still waiting for the boy to show courage. But Kim Hyun Jin has his own opinion. He doesn't care who wants what from him. The goblins are still inside the bus, but the first wave of attack is only seconds away. All the guy has to do is wait it out and not do anything reckless. But it seems the brave Lion King doesn't want to leave the player alone. So he asks for a deal from the mid-ranking administrator. Kim Hyun Jin is pulled into a blue portal and he genuinely doesn't know what's going on. Senya greets him with a nice smile and a bow as she meets the player. A personal request from the king to change the conditions of the training area, which pisses the guy off. The lion made a deal with a mid-level administrator. Unfortunately, the reputation of the brave lion king is questionable among players. He is known for imposing reckless bravery. Since this guardian revels in the cruelty and suffering of others, Kim Hyun Jin realizes that he'll decide to remove the safe zone. With an innocent look, Senya says that the deal is done, so the conditional safe zone will be canceled in 30 seconds. But Kim Hyun Jin clearly doesn't want to let the mid-level administrator go so quickly. 
He says that if the Guardian deliberately changes the training conditions, then the player should be compensated. He does not intend to shut up and settle for the elixir. Administrator Senia looks surprised. She looks carefully at the player who dictates his terms. They have no right to ignore the rules and he's risking his life. Hmm. He seems to have surprised the unknown observer and the administrator herself by ignoring the rules and laws. Kim Hyunjin understands why he surprised everyone. Those laws he mentioned were only known seven years later. He was clearly ahead of his time. How does this player know the laws? And moreover, he speaks about them with such confidence, as if he knows them all by heart. But the guy is evasive. How he knows the laws is his business. He doesn't have to account for his game. He's already wasted a lot of time on this conversation that doesn't make sense to him. He strongly points his finger at the average administrator, demanding compensation for wasting his time. Senior addressing the player by name, looking him straight in the eye. He's right to claim that he needs compensation and it looks like he'll be reimbursed. According to the laws, the safe zone will be extended for 10 seconds. The player will also be compensated for changing settings for the safe zone. He will be given a sword of attack power too, five and grease to sharpen the metal. The player is clearly not satisfied with such a dismal compensation for a tangible change in the game. But there's no way out. We have to take what we're given. The conversation is over and Kim Hyun Jin is brought back. The first goblin attack is over, so the monsters are redirected to another location. They start climbing out the windows, leaving the bus smelling new blood. They rush out on instinct to satisfy their thirst for violence. After making sure the monsters are gone, Kim Hyun Jin rises to his feet and looks around. He's glad that talking to the administrator allowed him to avoid the battle and buy more time for himself. The system tells the player that the brave Lion King is deeply disappointed, which Kim Hyun Jin doesn't care much for. The player stands up to his full height. He can finally catch his breath. A horrible picture is revealed in front of him. A mountain of dead people. Kim Hyun Jin is sickened by the smell of human blood. He nervously clenches his mouth, trying to hold back the urge to vomit. No time to relax. He needs to focus on his own survival. He pulls on his backpack as he heads for the exit of the bus, realizing that training is a week of hell. He opens the door, making a huge effort if he wants to make it through the seven days. He needs to find food and water. He paces the street in further thought, and to do that, he needs to get it. His main target is the grocery store. That's where he can get the supplies he needs. He needs to move very quickly. He studied here, so he has memorized the geography of the area very well. After the first monster invasion, the city is like a typhoon. The destroyed buildings are still ablaze. The townspeople are trying to recover, some screaming and begging for help, weeping and holding the injured bodies of their loved ones. But Kim Hyun Jin can't hear the screams. He realizes that there are wounded people. He can't navigate because of the dark and dense fog. He walks closer to the surviving car, taking a breath after a long run. He must avoid confrontations. He leans back. It's strange that he doesn't feel uneasy, even though there are many corpses around. Maybe it's because of the skill he's got. When he lowers his eyes, he decides he sees another breathless body, whose arm he almost stepped on. Most of the body is under the car. It seems he's mistaken. There's a faint cry for help from under the car. A small child crawls out, grabbing his leg, begging for help. Kim Hyun Jin, taken aback by the surprise, jumps back. He didn't expect to meet a survivor so quickly. He looks behind the other side of the car and sees the goblin. Why didn't he disappear after the attack was over? Chuckling sneakily, he holds the child's leg and holds his sword to it, clearly preparing to cut it off. The child bursts into tears as she raises her frightened eyes to the man across the street, who is her last hope. Kim Hyun Jin stares at the girl as if deciding whether to help her or not. He remains frozen in indecision as the exhausted child cries out for help without letting go of his leg. The girl, through her tears, remembers her mom and how much she'd like to see her again. Finally, Kim Hyun Jin comes out of the numbness and the child who's crying for help. It seems he didn't consider the situation. The girl is still uninjured, even though the goblin is trying his best to cut her leg. The girl seems to have gotten a beta bonus from the guardian as well. I'm also surprised by the unusual focus of the goblin himself. I wonder if the girl has a talent he's heard so much about but never seen in practice. Behind Kim Hyunjin's back, Administrator Senia appears and warns him that even though he is facing a child goblin, he is still very strong. What he sees is truly amazing to the player, and if Senya is telling the truth, it's very impressive. The girl has a clear talent of tank, which is very rare. Even Su Hyun Su, the King of Fists, is not capable of that. If he leaves her here, other goblins will come and she'll end up dead anyway. Kim Hyun Jin decides to help a child with a rare talent he calls on his inventory. He knows the training conditions well and can match the theory and experience he's had in the virtual dungeons. Although he knows that this goblin is hard to defeat, but only if directly attacked, he swings his sword. 
But if they don't see him, there's a chance to win. His sword goes right between the goblin's shoulders and head. Kim Hyun Jin realizes that all he has to do is find a weak point and hit it. And it seems to have succeeded, even though the player put almost all of his strength into the blow. The girl finally feels that the monster's grip is weakening, which means that the guy killed the goblin kid and saved her life. The calculation was correct. Kim Hyun Jin towers over his victim. The system notifies that the player has gained experience points. The guy turns towards the girl, putting the sword back in his inventory. He asks the girl to stand. She hesitantly crawls out from under the car, pulling herself up. She'd better stay close and keep up if she wants to go with him. The girl, satisfied with what she heard, quickly rises to her feet, bowing to her savior. Of course, she will not lag behind. In a couple of quick steps, she catches up with the guy, keeping up with him. Here's the grocery store. They're just in time to stock up on supplies. Once inside the store, Kim Hyun Jin instructs the girl that she must be clear that the front door must not be opened, no matter what happens. He turns to her, demanding that she promise not to go near the door. He can clearly see that the girl is frightened by what is happening. But what he says is extremely important, and she must obey him if she wants to survive in this hell. The girl is shaking, taking her eyes off the guy, trying to memorize every word. It seems that the shock of what is happening is starting to recede, giving way to fear. The system notifies the players about the second wave of invasion. It's good that the guys managed to get to the safe zone in time. Kim Hyun Jin noticed that the girl also raised her head at the board that the system provided, decides to clarify what exactly is written on the board. The girl shakily begins to read what is written, also listing the safe zones at the request of her savior. He finishes the sentence after the girl. He's not wrong. She's a player of remarkable talent. He heard that players with talent can see the safe zone in the hospital. But why can he see it too? Although the weird thing is that he can also see the extra safe zone setting. The system says the invasion has begun, so Kim Hyung Jin has to make sure they're safe. He once again reminds the girl to stay away from the door, and if she doubts she can unlock it, she should sit with her back to it. The system's finished setting up the safe zone, which means it's about to start. Outside, the primordial fog is lifting again, and turning toward the exit, the girl and Kim Hyun Jin, you see monsters roaming the street. Atrocities begin. People are maimed and injured beyond life at the hands of the monsters. Some people try to scare the goblins away with clubs, but it doesn't help them at all. Not only are the monsters much more stylish than they are, but they are also much more fast and reactive than the humans. One of the survivors spots a convenience store. They rush to its entrance, starting to bang on the doors trying to get inside the safe zone. Terrorized and terrified, they break into the convenience store asking for the door. They see a man standing right in front of them, begging and pleading for the guy to open the door for them. Kim Hyun Jin looking on, still not feeling anything, just watching. Despite his best efforts, people can't get into the safe zone, can't even break the glass window. But it's too late. The crowd of people attracts the monsters. They get closer and closer. No mercy and no pity, the monsters mercilessly mow down all who fall into their clutches. Kim Hyun Jin, holding his sword in front of him, is still watching. He lowers his sword. It's a good thing no one can force their way into this safe zone. Unfortunately, it's the rules of the quest. If the store door opens from the inside, the safe zone disappears instantly. With his hands over his ears and his eyes squeezed shut, the girl is shaking with fear. He realizes that if one of them opened the door, they wouldn't survive. Kim Hyun Jin opens his eyes wide. He'll remember this day for a long time. He looks at the corpses scattered in the street like puppets. People who only a short time ago were walking and enjoying life. He curses the guards for so calmly watching this mess of a system. He is filled with just anger. He will make them answer for their atrocities. There was terrible fighting in the street. Only after six hours, the rioting finally began to subside. The second goblin attack is over, which means it's time to relax. The girl decides to thank Kim Hyun Jin for saving her. She should have done it earlier, but she only thought of it now. The girl's name is Kang Seon Hua, and she's 14 years old with an embarrassed smile on her face. Kim Hyun Jin cuts off the child's joy. He saved her for a reason, and then he can't guarantee that she will be able to survive the quest. He seems to be overreacting. The girl grabs the guy's hand in worry and asks him not to leave her. Maybe she did something wrong. He asks her to calm down. He won't leave her. He just doesn't guarantee that he'll be able to protect her. He's not sure if he'll be able to save himself. She calms down a bit. He asks her to rest. They have a long journey tomorrow. When Kang Xion Hua asks him where they're going, he just sighs quietly and drops his eyes to the floor. He abruptly stands up to his full height, his fists clenched tightly, looking at the safe zones that the system has provided. Scrutinizing the additional zones, he finally makes a decision. Tomorrow they will go to Guangwaman. He looks towards the girl. She doesn't seem to see the extra safe zone. The girl only looks at the system. 
It seems that this function is really only available to Kim Hyun Jin. The extra zone is in Gwangwamen, it's Tower D, which they will go to tomorrow, and it's the key point of the training. Kim Hyun Jin carefully puts the provisions in his backpack. He needs to take care of food and water for the first time to survive. Packing everything properly, the guy puts the precious cargo on his shoulders, heading for the exit. The girl follows, staying close to the guy so she feels a little safer. They go out into the street covered in black fog. The corpses of dead people are lying everywhere. The buildings where the goblins have been burned down. Kwang Xian Hua covers her mouth with her hand when she sees what's going on around her. Trying to keep her composure when asked by the guy, she says she's fine. But how can she be okay after what she saw? It's too horrible for her age. In the time they've been walking, they haven't met a single survivor. That's what a destroyed city looks like. He glances at the girl, realizing how hard it is for her to stay calm seeing all this. He asks the girl to look carefully at her feet, but Kang Xian Hua doesn't hear him, raising her eyes to him and asking him to repeat it. Kim Hyun Jin asks her to look carefully at the ground and tell him if she sees anything jelly-like. Just before he can finish his sentence, the girl raises her hand pointing towards the unknown green slime in front of her. Is that what he means? It's a good thing they found the slime so quickly. It's a neutral monster, so its level is not reflected. This monster is the safest prey that even a child can handle. Kim Hyun Jin approached the slime with quick steps and chopped it in half with his rusty sword. The system notifies that the slime is killed and the player gets experience. He received three coins for the kill. A strange feeling arose in Kim Hyun Jin as if he had done it before. The slime is gone. Kim Hyun Jin explains to the girl what he knows. So they should stop from time to time if they find such a monster, which is why the girl should watch her feet carefully. But still, for the guy, it seems that everything that happened seems too simple. Kim Hyun Jin has a sense of deja vu. He's only used virtual weapons before. But why is this sword so familiar to him? The way he fights with it and picks it up, it's all very familiar to the guy. The guy fights the neutral monsters he finds along the way that Kwang Xian Hua finds. The girl notices the monsters better than this is the fifth one. A green cloud glows around the player. He leveled up and got two bonus characteristic points and a random bonus point. A girl notices a strange green light and asks Kim Hyun Jin what's wrong with him. Grabbing the staircase railing and looking at the guy, it turns out when he kills monsters, he gets stronger and the light means he's leveled up. When the girl says she wants to level up too, he looks up because he just found out he can do that. He's back to hacking away at the green slime and he's realizing that this sword is very familiar to him. Too well he handles it as easily as if he had done it many times before. Another monster fell by Kim Hyun Jin's sword. He feels more and more confident. The player's level has reached three, two more character points and one more random character point. Something's wrong, he's raising his level too fast. And it's the second time he's gotten a random characteristic point. In the notes of Su Hyun Su, the Fist King who also received training, these bonus points existed, but it was hard to get them. Unlike Su Hyun Su, Kim Hyun Jin got the second point without any effort at all. Memories of the second retest that determined he had no talent flashed before his eyes. The panels opened when he got the alert, though he was sure they were still closed. A hunch runs through his head. Apparently, he's an early bloomer, which means he only performs well in the beginning. It makes the most sense, but it's even better. He glances towards the administrator that follows them. He has managed to survive and has already reached level four. He's doing well so far. He's attracted the attention of a mid-level administrator and a few guards. If he does turn out to be an early bloomer, he will be able to achieve his goal of becoming a player after his training. He notices a few more monsters ahead, continuing to speculate that two years after the cataclysm, there will be a disease-curing potion. He swings his sword to slay the slime he found, which will cost one billion won, which means he can afford it and cure his mom. It seems like life is starting to make sense to him. So he has to. No, he has to survive and start raising money. On his way to Tower D, Kim Hyun Jin continues to kill slime to level 5. Little Kwang Xian Hua follows him obediently. At first, he was surprised by the bonus points, but then he noticed one important aspect. After the fifth level, you can create groups. He opens the system window in front of him. The surprised girl asks, what is it? A window pops up in front of Kwang Xian Hua, where she is invited to join the newly created group surprising her even more. He thanks the girl for accepting the invitation. She will grow stronger with him. With tears in her eyes, the girl says she'll try her best to do good for the group. Just don't let him leave her. Kim Hyun Jin looks at the girl with a kind smile at her worry. Of course, he feels sorry for her, but he'll take care of himself first. But he asks her to prove it with deeds, not words. Because even though he's growing and getting stronger in Tower D, they'll be facing the same monster in a fight with him. He won't be able to protect the girl. They pass the bus stop and continue on their way. 
and to protect someone at level 5 sounds ridiculous. Finally, most of the way through the bus stop, they continue on their way. The girl called Kim Hyun Jin. I think she saw a new monster. In the deserted street, a white fox strides forward, right in front of them. It's a level 3 urban fox clearly on the prowl for prey. It looks like a neutral monster, but it has one feature that provokes the surrounding monsters to attack. An icon appears in front of Kwang Xion Hua, and she stares at it with incomprehension. What kind of provocation is this? While the player has already moved a couple of steps away from the girl, deciding not to bother the fox, but to avoid the monster, freezes on the spot. With a wild grin, the angry fox pack prepares to attack, coming closer to its prey. For some reason, they cluster against the girl, surrounding her on all sides. And now, having already taken off in a great leap, the foxes pounce on the defenseless girl, who only manages to cover her face with her hands. Closed and covering her eyes from fear and anticipation of inevitable death, the girl lets out a scream, tears welling up in her eyes. While fighting off the foxes with his sword, Kim Hyunjin notices that the girl takes almost no damage, but despite this, the monsters will only keep coming. He quickly slashes the necks of the city foxes. He has to finish them off quickly to avoid attracting attention. A surprised Kwang Sion Hua looks at the guy. She just escaped the attack thanks to him. Kim Hyun Jin wonders if the girl is injured, while his body glows green, which means he's leveling up. The administrator finally decides to speak, inquiring about the player's current level, wiping the sweat off Kim Hyun Jin's face, saying that he has reached level 8. Apparently, the admin has the ability to become invisible. To Senya's disbelief, the player offers to scan him and see his level in person. After doing as Kim Hyun Jin says, the administrator is convinced that the player is not lying. His rapid growth surprises the unknown observer. He confirms that even for Kim Hyun Jin himself, his rapid growth is a mystery. He calls the system to show him the status window. What's going on is strange to him. A level 8 status window should look very different. Although his rapid growth is quite unusual, it's certainly a good opportunity, he calls out to the girl. He points to Tower D. They're going to go to that building. He's going to go down to the dungeon. He'll tell her everything once they're inside. If the girl doesn't listen to him, she'll die. That statement really scares Kwang Xion Hua. There's no need to be scared. All she has to do is to follow his instructions and follow through. For every level three fox monster Kim Hyun Jin kills, he gets more experience from the system. Even though he's tired from the quick battle, he's still looking quite cheerful, while the girl is looking around at the monsters in confusion. He sneaks a glance at Sion Hua. He gave her his old combat gauntlets that he earned in the battle. It should keep her safe for a while. Even though the girl knows they'll be arriving at their destination soon, she's not ready. But she'll go inside as planned. In front of them is the gateway to the training dungeon. You need to be at least level 5 to get in. Kim Hyun Jin is asked if he is ready to go down into the dungeon. After answering in the affirmative, he and Kwang Sion Hua are pulled into the portal and transported to the right place. After entering the dungeon before landing, they find goblins and a pack of city foxes. Noticing their new prey, the goblins become ferocious, their eyes glowing brightly. After a brief instruction from Kim Hyun Jin, Sun Hua clenches her fist tighter, ready for battle. Kim Hyun Jin disbanded the group he had just created, ordering them to deal with the goblins first. They disperse to their designated spots. A pack of goblins rush at Kwang Xion Hua, armed with clubs, the girl's dexterous hand movements delivering devastating blows to her opponents. They have a clear strategy to fight only goblins, because the dungeon is different from the city. The foxes are neutral and will not attack first if they are not touched or provoked. Kim Hyun Jin's mind flashes that the girl is really talented. She's doing even better than he expected. She exceeds his expectations. The goblins' attacks don't hurt her while she scatters them like game balls. Kwang Xion Hua, out of breath, tries to catch her breath. Kim Hyun Jin praises the girl, suggesting that she rest for a while. The goblin's main mini-boss is about to appear because they killed almost all the monsters. The player turns to the girl. If she is out of breath, then let her finish the rest of the goblins, and he will wait for the boss. Kwang Xion Hua rushes into the second fight to finish off the others. The fox monster has joined the hordes of monsters that have fallen before him. Kim Hyun Jin's heart begins to pound as there are only a few monsters left to separate them from the main battle. But he decided not to rush things by activating the pause effect. The unknown observer showed a deep curiosity towards the player. This action also brought back the curiosity of the brave Lion King and stirred up some more of the guards. Kim Hyun Jin knows that a pause means a temporary cessation of action in a particular area. Turns to address the... The mid-level administrator is clearly unhappy with the behavior of a player who has just used an artifact that only she can use. 
Gritting her teeth, half-turned Kim Hyun Jin has no idea what she's talking about. She's saying that the player acts like he knows what's waiting for him. Is that really what he intended? Let's say she's right to say that. Will it make a difference? But Senya thinks the player is being unreasonable. She covers her eyes, explains that the mini-boss Kim Hyun Jin wants to summon is a level 13 goblin soldier. And because it's a boss, it has all of its stats boosted. So he's being unreasonable because he'll die with the girl if he doesn't stop. Why would he start this battle if it's already a foregone conclusion, which surprises the guy? It sounds like she's already buried him, so how can you doubt his success? But to Senya, his words sound strange because she just wanted to warn him. But the experienced Kim Hyun Jin is not easily fooled. He feels that the receptionist is trying to lie to him. Senya recently said that he's a player who seems to know the future and has gotten a lot of attention. But in fact, he's become a rare figure who can put on a show. That's why she's benefiting from his survival, considering he hasn't heard from her in the future. He smiled to himself. He couldn't even come up with an excuse, just played dumb. He reproached Senya for her lack of communication skills and added to himself that since nothing is known about her, she'll be destroyed soon. Is Kim Hyun Jin insulting her? To which the player takes the innocent look that he's just telling her the truth. If she wants to entertain the guards and be helpful, then let her say after a pause that the player can't defeat the mini-boss. He will surely survive and bring victory. Such a confident statement shocks Senya, but he once again suggests to her to evaluate the situation. If he is level 8 and defeats level 13, the guards will probably go crazy with excitement when they see such a thing. She'll be a competent mid-level administrator, but in return, since he's helping to diversify her little show, he'll ask one favor in exchange for a deal. Senya's hand trembles, electric tension starting to glow in it. Her patience can't be tested, and this time the player Kim Hyun Jin crossed the line. She starts to feel anger. Tensing up a bit and straightening up sharply, the guy continues that if she really wanted to kill him, she would have done it long ago. By deliberately stopping her training, she may be losing a lot now, but the deal with him will only benefit her. It seems the player's words have convinced the administrator so she's willing to listen to the terms. A drop of sweat drips down Kim Hyun Jin's cheek. The conversation with Senya was harder than he expected. The training starts again. Killing another monster, Kwang Xian Hua raises her level to seven. Taking a fighting stance, she reports that she's killed the last monster Kim Hyun Jin calls her over to him. The girl runs to him, fulfilling his request. They must act quickly. Miniboss Yearlin's paws appear in the arena. The system lets her know that all conditions are met for his summoning. And the system is already preparing for the 13th level mini-boss to appear, while Kim Hyun Jin and his ward sit quietly behind a screen in the next room. While scrutinizing the monster that has appeared in a haze, the guy notes that the boss is bigger than he thought. The preparation of the mini-boss is finished. The goblin lets out a vicious growl. He senses the humans and starts smashing the space around him with his weapon. Slowly but surely, he gets closer to his victims. Kim Hyun Jin holds the girl tightly against him, trying to calm her down. The surest way to defeat a goblin soldier is to avoid its most dangerous skill, spear throw. That's why they hid behind the ATM so the metal would take the spear throw, not them. Now we can go out. Kim Hyun Jin is on his feet calling Kwang Xian Hua to follow him. He rejoins Kwang Xian Hua in the group. She hesitantly looks out from behind him. The player notices a mid-level administrator nearby. Now let her be very attentive. He grips his sword tighter. She's about to see a weak level 8 player. Defeat the goblin mini-boss, he comes out of hiding to confront the monster at full height. A level 13 goblin soldier stands before him, clutching his metal baton tighter and looking at his opponent. As expected of a mini-boss, he's more intimidating than the average goblin. That's why he'll rush at the survivors after they defend the room. Kim Hyun Jin, looking at the goblin carefully, has two attack options. A simple jab or a swing, which is what the monster seems to be doing with his iron spear. Yes, it's a swing, so there's only seconds to get it right. And then the player miraculously dodges one of the monster's blows, and then dodges the second one, attack after attack from the strong enemy. But Kim Hyun Jin ducks under the goblin and slashes at its stomach with the point of his sword. Although the blow was strong enough, Kim Hyun Jin realizes that he can't do any more damage with his sword. Since the goblin didn't even feel the wound, he lunges at the man again. Dodging again, the player notices how incredibly fast the goblin soldier is. He assumes a more stable posture, emphasizing his feet and adopting a fighting stance. He can still anticipate the monster's blows, which gives him a big advantage. The mini-boss goblin is visibly surprised that his attacks are so cleverly dodged. With all his strength, Kim Hyun Jin strikes the monster to finally kill it. While Kim Hyun Jin is fighting the monsters, the system tells Kwang Xian Hua that she was provoked which means all the monsters in the room will attack her at once. The city fox has already gotten to its prey and it's clawing at the girl's left shoulder. Kwang Xianhua 
decides to stick to the plan her sponsor told her about while the goblins are already on her. She endures while a pack of monsters surrounds her and inflicts wounds on her. She will do anything to keep Kim Hyun Jin from abandoning her. Meanwhile, mid-level administrator Senya gets notifications that her channel is filled with anonymous guards. She hears the viewers' stunned cries. They want to know if the player's level is that low. They watch. And even after the administrator confirms Kim Hyun Jin's level, they don't believe he's real. Maybe he's hiding something. Although Senya also notes that this player's movements are different from the others, but she doubts that he can defeat the monster, who looms over his victim like a rock. The size of the goblin warrior is staggering. She watches the fight closely. Weak attacks won't hurt the monster, but they will drain Kim Hyun Jin. The guards watch carefully the player's honed movements as she concentrates intensely on the fight. And the colossally devastating attacks of the mini goblin boss himself, who is ready to crush his victim with a single blow. Kim Hyun Jin gives the order that Kwang Shan Hua can begin. While the girl is being tormented by the monsters, kicking and gnawing at her from all sides. Immediately the girl swings her fist. Finally she can fight back. The first one to get the nuts is the goblin. With one blow, she kills it, increasing her experience. With every monster she kills, Kuang Shunhua gains experience. What's going on is beyond any logical explanation, especially for the administrator himself. Kim Hyun Jin, who is a member of his group, gains experience and raises his level to nine. The goblin attacks his enemy without a break, recovering quickly after a strong blow that the player gave him. Kim Hyun Jin's sword loses strength with each blow. Thanks to the player's level up, he also fully recovers, removing all negative status effects. He asks Kwang Sion Hua to keep the monsters at a distance and be ready. Thanks to Sion Hua's help, he'll be able to recover faster and raise his levels higher. As he dodges another attack, he prays for one chance. He must hit the back of the neck, which is a weakness for a goblin. Drenching himself in sweat while dodging attacks, he manages to check the status window just a little while longer. Meanwhile, Kwang Sion Hua is mercilessly hitting the monsters one after another without regard to fatigue. Another goblin falls, struck by a strong blow from the girl's hand, giving her a level up. Kim Hyun Jin can't seem to dodge the attack coming at him. All that's left is to take the spear, which falls on him like a multi-ton sleeper. His legs are shattered by the force of the yearling's swing, but he's already level 10. A flash of green light in the eyes and around the player's body means that he is healed and fully restored. He throws the weight off his shoulder, shifting his legs as if in flight, passes his sword, whose strength has been reduced even further straight through the enemy's neck. And from behind, with the ease of a bird flying over the mini-boss, he draws his sword, aiming clearly at the right place. The monster himself notices it from the side, letting out an unnatural piercing scream. Screaming like a kamikaze, the player flies at the monster, ready to deliver the final blow. To the most vulnerable spot on its neck, which will bring him victory in such a grueling battle. And the sword breaks in its owner's hands, falling from his grasp. Half of its point remains in the neck of the mini-boss goblin. And now it's over, the system congratulates Kim Hyun Jin for defeating the monster. He's the first to defeat the boss monster with only level 10. Sung Hwa herself, tired and hysterical, runs to him. The system credits Kim Hyun Jin with the victory as a single pass. She throws herself into his arms, not believing that they had won, and he hugs her back. By their actions, the players managed to fulfill one of the conditions of the hidden figure. Was there really a hidden boss? At that time, somewhere on Guangwaman Street, not far from D-Tower, a pack of city foxes glaring at their victims with rage-red eyes are slowly closing in on the human survivors. A guy rushes towards them with bare fists, shouting encouragement. With confident movements, he easily kills the monster, who couldn't even realize what had happened. The crowd that follows the guy is genuinely surprised at how easily he was able to defeat the fox of the eighth level. The crowd cheers him on, once again a one-hit victory, which means Su Hyun Su is the strongest in the training area. These compliments make the guy uncomfortable, and he awkwardly holds his head. He's not so sure about it personally. On the same street nearby, Kim Hyun Jin and his group are also hunting. When asked by Seon Hua, he asks her to go on but stops. Are there other survivors? A group of people led by Su Hyun Su notice them and try to get their attention. This person seems to resemble Kim Hyun Jin. He and Sun Hua freeze in place. But that's all later now. Looking at the slain mini boss, the guy asks himself one question. Does he really have no talent? When you look at the fact that he won, it's impossible because if he did, he couldn't have won. Even knowing what was going to happen in the future was no guarantee of an easy win, a conclusion that the unknown observer also notes, concluding that the player is very competent, but now it's not clear what Kim Hyun Jin's own limit is. The system is talking again. The player is again interested in a new guard. 
The character of the Guardian Girl with Scales is as close as possible to absolute goodness. Unlike the Lion King, she prioritizes the safety and well-being of the players by sponsoring them generously. Kim Hyun Jin is puzzled as to why this Guardian is so attentive to him. Giving reasonable support and compensation, she has earned the love of many players. Perhaps the Scale Girl showed interest in him because of Song Hua? Looking at Kwang Xian Hua once again, because she really looks like he's saving her. At this time, the receptionist stretched out his arms and summoned a light golden glow in front of him. A blob of energy like a small yellow mini-universe swirls in her hand. Senya turns to the player. For defeating the mini-boss Kim Hyun Jin, a reward is given in the form of a new sword of normal quality, normal durability, and attack power from 4 to 12. After receiving all the rewards, Kwang Xian Hua asks his hero with hopeful eyes where they are going. Now they're going to Cheong Yixin and try to kill as many wolf monsters as they can. Now they're not level 7 foxes, but real wolf monsters that are level 9. The conversation that Kim Hyun Jin heard from someone did not escape the mid-level administrator. They're leaving Tower D because the King of Fists, Su Yu Hyun, will be here soon. Since Su Yu Hyun will be fighting on the second level because they've only cleared the second floor. So all the survivors can stay in a safe zone and survive until the end of the training. A portal appears in front of them as they leave the safe zone. Kim Hyun Jin has a new goal that goes beyond mere survival. As they stand in front of the portal, he is now certain that he has talent, which means that his dream of making a lot of money is becoming a reality. He's going to take every opportunity that fate gives him, and it doesn't matter if it's an acquired talent or an innate one. Back to the events where our guys were met by Su Hyun Su's group, who were genuinely surprised to find survivors after so many days. They met for the first time, but Kim Hyun Jin recognized the King of Fists, Su Hyun Su, who will be ranked 8th in the top of the famous players. Yes, King of Fists is much easier now than when Kim Hyun Jin was alive, but he'll get the title for the past training for a reason. Reaching out to the boy and girl Su Hyun Su, he invites them to join his group. He wants them to be a team so they'll have a better chance of survival. Without blinking an eye, Kim Hyun Jin confidently turns down the King of Fists. Surprising Su Hyun Su and his guys, it seems no one expected that there would be people who want to go it alone. All they have to do is hold out for a week. The two of them can handle it. Su Hyun Su scratches the back of his head and awkwardly says goodbye to the travelers he meets. They wish each other good luck, the crowd whispers and looks at each other. Half turned, ignoring the murmurs of the crowd, Kim Hyun Jin gives one last piece of advice to Su Hyun Su. He says that if he encounters a monster that's too strong, aim for its left eye. Kim Hyun Jin turns around and walks off along the planned route, leaving a bewildered Su Hyun Su, who thanked the traveler. Kim Hyun Jin and Kwang Xian Hua finally reach their destination. Shyly looking at her mentor, the girl decides to break the silence, clearly worried about the group of people they had met earlier. Kim Hyun Jin pretends not to know who they met and assures them that they'll probably be fine, but that they'd better take care of themselves. But he said it was more to reassure Xian Hua because Su Hyun Su will face the inevitable next. According to the memoirs of the Fist King, about 50 survivors will go with him to the dungeon of Tower D. They will deal with the first floor and go to capture the second floor, but an unexpected enemy will appear, which will kill most of the group. By the end of the battle, he will be alone and will receive the title of the man who cleared the dungeon. In his memoirs, he will write that clearing the second floor was a mistake. Perhaps this time it will end differently for them, but he will not join them. The risk is too great. He's distracted from his thoughts by Sung Hua. She stops half-stepping, trying to speak as quietly as possible, raises her index finger. The monsters are ahead. The monsters are carelessly walking along the river road, just what they need. When the monsters hear that uninvited guests are approaching, the wolf monsters show their fangs as they growl and prepare to attack. The brave Kwang Xian Hua, clearly well-trained from previous attacks, rushes forward. The provocation board appears again. All the monsters start pouncing on her. He has a purpose, and it's not to continue training in the dungeon. The wolves are outnumbered. They're even more ferocious than the foxes. As he chops the monsters with his new sword, Kim Hyun Jin knows exactly what he wants, which is to break his level limit. To raise it higher, he needs to fight higher level monsters like these. After praising herself for listening to her savior and picking up the baton, Kwang Xian Hua took out the last monster. Turning to the system, she notices that Kim Hyun Jin has raised his level to 11, which the system congratulates him on. The sweating guy doesn't seem surprised because he knows that some people can barely reach level 10. But the system's next cheer really came as a surprise. Now he's a player who's been awarded the title of Discoverer. He reads the characterization carefully. His title was given to him for discovering new territories. It also gives him plus 20% experience and doesn't conflict with other titles. 
Although he had never heard of such a title, there was a logic to it. No one had ever removed the level limit in the past. A worried Sian Hua asks if Kim Hyun Jin is okay. Yes, there's nothing to worry about, so they can continue on their way. All the while, they were being watched very closely by Senya in invisible mode. Agreeing with the guards, she decides to check it out because she's been thinking about it too. She repeats to herself, completely immersed in her thoughts. After passing the safe zone in the hospital, the fog descends on the city again. In the room, keeping up with Kim Hyunjin's group of players, Selena listens intently to their conversation. A guy pointing somewhere, offering to pass, carrying a bat on his shoulder, Sian Hua agrees. The mid-level receptionist accompanying them seems to be angry about yesterday. She calls out to the player, clarifying what she already knows. Of course he got a title, but which one? She is still friendly and insists that the player tell her what title he got. But the player won't tell her anything. Taking the most unconcerned look, he tells the administrator, who stands dumbfounded, never before has a player not told her his title. The guards don't know what title a player gets until he tells them, so they keep pressing the administrator. He looks sympathetically at Senya, he realizes she must be having a hard time, but he has no reason to name his title, let the guards be interested in him. Looking at the road sign, Kwang Sian Hua asks if they will go to Cheong Yechian today, of course today and tomorrow too. At the same time, next to Guang Waman, standing at Tower D, the leader stops the crowd and broadcasts. The crowd listens attentively to the fact that there is a dungeon nearby and that they don't know what danger awaits them there. In a confident voice, Su Hyun Su talks about increasing the risk reward. The crowd listens to their leader, clearly alarmed, and he offers to go together if they agree. The enthusiastic spectators and admirers of Su Hyun Su's strength shout their approval and desire to join the trek. Some of the crowd sighs, smiling approvingly. It's much better to stick together, so more and more people are willing to join Su Hyun Su's group. Encouraged by the crowd's support, the future King of Fists raises his hand up, saying that they will rest today and go to the dungeon tomorrow. While Kim Hyun Jin and his carefree monster hunting in Chung Yechen, the system is relentlessly creating new wolf monsters in that place, which is very good for their team. The wolves are cawing and growling as they assume a fighting stance for the upcoming battle. Calm as a boa constrictor, Kim Hyun Jin meets his enemies with his sword at his side, and with one swing he strikes two predators who haven't even gotten close. With his bat at the ready, Kwang Sion Hua keeps a close eye on the monsters, and another one appears, kneading his tired wrist, which has served his monster-killing master well for two days now. During this time, they've gotten many useful items and coins from them. They are so fast and accustomed to hunting that they kill monsters much faster than they appear. Kim Hyun Jin walks briskly over to the other side and walks towards the wolf werewolf, which is not yet fully created by the system. With a swing, another monster falls victim to its executioner. The wounded monster is already lying on the floor, disappearing as quickly as it appeared. But suddenly something goes wrong. The system lights up red, illuminating the hunter. Kim Hyun Jin receives a notification that they've met all the conditions of the hidden figure. The conditions of the mission are to gain knowledge of the hidden figure, get level 12, defeat 500 wolves. Even though Kim Hyun Jin was careful to avoid all dangers, they must have found him. A lycanthrope wolf is forming a portal through which the wolf will come to them, and the player is clearly very sickened by this news. Pale and confused, Kim Hyun Jin looks at his ward, ordering her to run away immediately. There's no time to talk. Just run away as fast as possible. But their speed is not enough. The clouds gathering over their heads do not bode well. A werewolf of monstrous proportions has almost completely emerged from the portal, ready to tear apart anyone it meets on its way. The portal immediately disappeared behind it as the monster emerged, the lycanthrope unleashing an animal howl. Kim Hyun Jin and Kwang Xian Hua's bodies are affected by the howl effect, paralyzing their victims from moving. The girl falls to the ground unable to move, her body paralyzed. She struggles to resist and looks fearfully at her patron. He orders her to hide behind the car and stay hidden at all costs. But she can't leave him. She has to help. Kim Hyun Jin is adamant. She has to do it immediately. The guy guessed that they might encounter a cloaked figure while training at this location, but never expected to see a werewolf. This lycanthrope is clearly stronger than any monster on the second floor of Tower D. Kim Hyun Jin's too low level hides the real level of this monster from him. He can't count it no matter how hard he tries. This monster is at least level 20, 25, so it shouldn't have shown up at the training. Kim Hyun Jin is at a loss to find the weaknesses of the enemy that's coming at him. Their difference is too great, which means his decisions will determine whether he survives today or not. He's focused and scared, frantically searching for ideas to save himself, clutching the hilt of his sword tightly. And the next second he unclenches his hand, the weapon slams helplessly into the brambles. The monster has spotted its prey and is ready to chase, but as much as he wants to, 
Kim Hyun Jin realizes it's too late to run away. So there's no choice but to use the drink of courage that the Lion King gave him in the beginning. We'll have to use the great adventurer Jackson's strategy. Looking straight into the wolf's red eyes, Kim Hyun Jin is betting on chance and luck. So let this thing attack and they'll see who wins in the end. As if on cue, the lycanthrope leaps towards its opponent with a wild howl. The gigantic creature, already halfway to him, does not slow down, does not distract himself, and follows him to his goal. Kwang Sung Hyun, who is scared to death, looks out from behind the car in horror. She also can't determine the level of this scary and huge wild monster. The level of the monster she can't see is panic and animal fear. It is definitely different from all the other monsters she has seen before. She looks at Kim Hyun Jin covered in cold sweat, not knowing what he's going to do now. A few seconds later, Kim Hyun Jin meets the lycanthrope next to her. A couple more seconds, and the monster will catch up with its coveted prey that won't run away. The fact that the system doesn't show the monster's level means only one thing to him. Making the monster even more intimidating, a beastly grin, as if the system itself is taunting the player, who realizes that he can't defeat such an opponent that is now standing before him with its long paws outstretched towards him. But no matter what, he will not give up without a fight, will not give up. As long as there is at least one option to win, he will use it. Destroying this monster in battle is obviously a bad idea. His brain starts to accelerate his search for other options. He recalls the theory before the training, which says that they probably won't face this monster at low levels. In lecture number 38, Lycanthropes, the great adventurer Jackson better stay away from such monsters. If the battle cannot be avoided, the player has only one decision to make a method worth trying even at the risk of death. Kim Hyun Jin calls on his inventory, pulling out good quality grease. The lycanthrope's first attack is a jump, so he can at least try to dodge it. Unaware of the victim's intentions, the monster leaps at Kim Hyun Jin, who not only dives underneath the mutant, but also makes use of the necessary equipment. He opens a bottle of lubricant while watching the monster's actions. The next step, lycanthrope landing on the ground will instantly attack. The monster, having lost sight of its victim, quickly turns around turning over in a leap. His paws have not yet reached the ground, but he is ready to attack. A few seconds more and he will land on his paws. It's time just under the shadow of its paws. Kim Hyun Jin mustn't miss. The outcome of the battle depends on it. The monster's paws land on the spilled liquid, just as the player calculated. Making a strange sound, the monster clearly looks confused. He didn't expect to slip and fall instead of attacking. Without wasting any time, Kim Hyun Jin's punch is a full-force punch that flies into the monster's torso. He throws chaotic blows at his opponent, cheering himself up. He can do it, because the elixir has made him much stronger. The lycanthrope flies into the monster who is completely unaware and confused. The lycanthrope flies into the creek that is near the road, helplessly waving its paws. The calm voice of the narrator sounds in his head. To overpower this monster, you must use its size against itself, and by any means necessary, rightly or wrongly, to push it into the water which our Kim Hyun Jin managed to do using his wit and ingenuity. Trying to come to his senses and calm his beating heart, the guy takes a breath behind him, not believing his eyes, sits Sion Hua. Meanwhile, the monster that had just horrified the witnesses whimpered helplessly and floundered in the water. Although the lycanthrope is still not level, it has shrunk in size. Sung Hua opens his mouth in surprise. How did it happen that the monster changed so much in a matter of seconds? Raising his sword... Kim Hyun Jin explains that the water always has that effect on them. Now it's no bigger than an ordinary wolf. The enthusiastic girl clearly suspects that her recipient knows martial arts, but he denies having the time. But he fought so skillfully, she starts to show how it all looked from the outside and how cool he was at that moment. He draws his sword over the monster. If he was really that good, he wouldn't have to resort to such tricks. The steel confidently pierces the sternum of the evil monster. The system notifies that the player has killed the lycanthrope. Kim Hyun Jin, deep in his heart, is happy that it was much easier than he imagined. His level has now reached 13. Was he really strong enough to bring Kim Hyun Jin a level up? But the surprises don't end there. Just now, the system notified him that he leveled up to 14 and then 15. Not only did he kill a hidden figure, he also got a second title of Excellent Hunter, which shocked Kim Hyun Jin. Not only did he get a title for a lycanthrope, but he was promoted three levels at once, which impressed the guards. Kim Hyun Jin is receiving coins from sponsors, but the Lion King is clearly unhappy with the player's methods, considering them dirty. Kim Hyun Jin calls for a mid-level administrator, and Sung Hwa runs up to him. Selena appeared as soon as the player called her name, as if she was waiting for him. She confirms that the player has reached level 15 and can now access the item store. It's good that there is a limit to the levels in training. To be honest, Kim Hyun Jin doubted his availability in training. 
Senya has started training. In the item store, you can spend coins to buy special items. Since he's in training, the item store will be set to training. Four items are available to the player. Even Kim Hyunjin will be happy with this. Since he is in training, these items will be enough. The player counts the coins, deciding what he should take in reserve. The mid-level administrator waits patiently by his side. Senya turns to the player to ask him a question, which surprises Kim Hyunjin that the receptionist asks his real name. He gives himself the most bored look. Why would he answer that question? Senya looks away, trying to keep her anger at bay. Not that she's curious. She decides to change the subject. Maybe he wants to check his title or other characteristics, to which Kim Hyun Jin agrees he will do it after the store, but he will do it in person. Senya turns white with anger and can't say anything in response, while Kim Hyun Jin remains calm while choosing the right items. He strategizes to remain mysterious in front of the guards, keeping their interest. His second title pops up on the window. After reading all that this title gives him, he exhales a sigh of relief. He'll need these skills for sure. Now they can move on. Kwang Sung Hua is curious where they're going now. They will return to the dungeon of the second floor tower. The girl listens carefully to her protector. She remembers the first floor of Tower D, where they defeated the mini boss monster. He told her that the second floor is much more dangerous. Kim Hyun Jin agrees with Sung Hua. There is indeed a monster much more dangerous than the goblin warrior. At the same time, in the dungeon of Tower D, the battle has already been fought, and on the second floor, there's a mountain of corpses scattered on the second floor. The only survivor who's on his feet is Su Hyun Su. He's already exhausted. He presses his fist to his chin, trying to cover his face. And where did this monster come from? A goblin of enormous proportions towers before him. And how are they supposed to defeat it? The monster's ferocious eyes are terrifying to those who look into them. This opponent is much stronger than any of the goblins. The goblin takes up a fighting stance looking around for worthy opponents.